right good evening all good evening you are able to hear me right everyone able to hear me right yes yes okay uh, let me share my screen any questions any doubts sir i have doubts yes please sir the notes which you have provided to us there are five types of installation sir which type of uh -huh. installation is most commonly used in organization we will use only gui okay so the notes which i just provided to you that's old notes so no need to worry about other types of installations uh, no one will ask you you have to install the sql server in this way in that way uh, 99 not 90 percent is everyone will follow gui based installations only and uh, your notes contains up to 8 years 10 years also so in our class we are going to discuss up to 4 to 5 years of experience so if you see some extra topics in the notes please use my old videos okay so that you will get an idea if you have time but whatever okay. important topics are there for four to five years i don't skip i'll complete all those things for four to five years and it will be up to eight years also i'll complete the things and all if you see extra things nothing to worry i'm not missing it intentionally i'm skipping it as i know that are not useful nowadays okay those are all like old old thing old stuff and all so that four or five types of installations if you still interested in our channel we have a telugu playlist go to that telugu playlist if you want if you want to learn other types of installations also there you can see all other types of installations but if you have extra time you have to concentrate if if you have time to practice on the regular things first concentrate on the regular stuff then if you have extra time, if you want to learn extra, then go to my Telugu playlist and you can watch those things and all to practice it. Okay. Okay. Sir, yeah. Another one doubt, sir. Yes, please. Sir, uh, to connect a server, we are using uh, the IP address of that server, no, sir? Yes. In the organization, you have said that the servers are uh, connected with each other uh, through oh. intranet. That means okay. that IP address will be constant, no, sir? That's what I said. It's a static IP address. Static IP address. Mm -hmm. The IP address which we are using is dynamic, no, sir? In, in our practice, it's a dynamic IP address. When you change your network, it will be changed. In the office, they don't change the network, right? So it won't oh, be yes, changed sir. and it's in a static IP address. Okay. Mm -hmm. That will be provided by network team, no, sir? Yes, you will have, you see, every time, usually while installing, they will provide the new IP address for the Windows team. Okay, while installing, network team, uh, Windows team will contact the network team, network team will provide an IP address for that machine while installation of Windows server, not SQL server installation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions, guys? Any questions, any doubts? So I started uploading uh, yesterday's classes in our channel batch 44 every one hour one video will be uploaded today some videos will be uploaded tomorrow again some videos will be uploaded okay so no need to wait for the videos you can simply okay if you subscribe you will get the notification once the video is uploaded then you can just follow that video. Right, okay. So in our last class, we discussed about, uh, uh, we just started guys, we just, uh, we discussed about the system databases, importance of the system databases, how the system databases will come online when you start the SQL server or restart the SQL server, right? And uh, we also discussed about the uh, patching process, how many types of updates are there, what is the service pack? what is a cumulative update, what are hot fixes we have, how frequently we'll patch the server, what is the process in patching the SQL server, like all these things we discussed in the last class, right? So now we'll discuss some precautions you have to take while patching the SQL server. Then what we can do is we'll, we'll start the okay patching, we'll patch the SQL server, then we'll jump into the security, right? Security, what is the security involved? What are different types of authentications we have? Right, and how to like how a Windows person will log in, how a SQL person will connect to the SQL server, 
okay so all these things we will discuss today right we will start the security also in this class so let's discuss about first let me connect to the server remotely let me check the ip address of this machine ip config Right, okay so uh, what precautions we have to so you got the approvals your change request is approved now you are ready to patch the sql server so now you have to take care of okay some things before patching the sql server you have to take care of some things okay so what are those things we have to consider before patching let's discuss okay so uh, we have 10 important points okay in my whole experience whatever like i, I uh, whatever i face the issues and all uh, and what challenges my colleagues face everything i just documented these are the very important precautions we have okay so all these precautions you have to follow and make sure before patching okay you have to follow all these precautions and all okay right so what are the precautions that will follow before patching always it's good practice to restart the sql server first of all once you got the approval from the customer first thing what you have to do is usually will patch the sql servers during the weekends guys okay usually will patch the sql servers during the weekends so make sure you copy the service pack file or cumulate update file okay uh, on weekdays itself okay make sure you you should you should have a, a that file right will we will download that software right either service pack or cumulate update will download I, I just shown you how to download the service pack how to download the update so usually sometimes in the organization will download sometimes your team lead or your manager or any other colleague will download and they will keep it in the shared location so what you have to do go to that server just simply open the shared location shared path and this uh, just simply copy paste that software that service pack or cumulate update from your shared location to your server which in which server you are patching okay just copy the particular software okay uh, do this practice on weekdays why because weekends sometimes if the shared path is not working uh, usually weekends no one will be there to support you so if sometimes if the server is new server and all the shared paths may not work this is the challenge okay so that's why make sure you have all the shared paths sometimes we'll have two three shared paths also check which shared path is working and try to copy the software on weekday itself if some issues are there if you are unable to copy your colleagues will be there they will help you out with any other new shared location or or uh, any windows team will help you to give the access of the shared path on the server so make sure you copy the software that service pack or cumulate update on weekdays if the uh, server is scheduled to patch on weekends try to copy the softwares on weekdays if you are unable to copy your colleagues will be there to help you but if you don't copy on weekdays and if you are planning to copy on weekends 90 percentage it will be succeeded while copying but 10 percentage if you are unable to copy if there are some challenges no one will be there to help you out weekends right a very uh, limited staff will be available not sure they are going to help you out or not so that's why it's always good practice to copy the software on weekdays itself that is the first challenge second challenge okay uh, just check how many sql servers are running in that machine you cannot simply uh, assume that only one sql server why because why we have to check how many sql servers are there in that machine you might have two instances three instances four instances sometimes five instances also as a best, best practice as a precautionary step before patching the sql server you have to reboot the windows server if you reboot the windows server means what will happen all the instances in that machine will be restarted right agree 
Is it clear, guys? So, Sorry. but you took the approval for only one instance. But there are five instances are there in that machine. You haven't took any approval for other instances. So, issue will be escalated and they will definitely, okay, you, you are the answerable person. You have to justify why you didn't take approval for other instances. So, if possible, while raising the change request itself, check how many instances are there. While requesting the customer, while requesting the client, hey, I need downtime. So, before requesting the client, when you need the downtime, check how many instances are there. If only one instance is there, that will be fine. No problem. If two instances are there, check who is the owner of other instance. Sometimes, most of the times, uh, the same owner will be there. Okay. Yeah, but you have to let, let him know that other instance also will be affected during restart of the server. So that other instance also will be down. You have to update him that if you have multiple instances, other instances also will be affected during the restart process. They will also be restarted like that. You have to let him know. Otherwise, what he will escalate, you know, the DBA, he didn't inform me that other instances will be restarted like that. Again, you cannot justify. So it's very uh, important thing that before taking the approvals from the client check how many instances are there in that machine if one instance is there no headache no issues you can take the approval if multiple instances are there check who are the owners of other instances take the approval from them also so that uh, there is no problem from your side you took approvals from everyone okay right that is the first challenge check second challenge how many services are up and running this is also important guys okay Sometimes you might have two instances. Imagine you have two instances. One instance is in intentionally, one instance is down. One instance, intentionally someone stopped that instance. The services of other instance is not running. So if you don't check, if you don't check how many instances are there, how many services are up and running, after SQL Server installation, again you have to check this one. After SQL Server installation, you will restart the server, right? So once you restarted the server, you have to make sure whether all services are up and running or not. So after installation, you will check. Before installation, if you don't check, after installation, if you checked that one services, if other instance services are down, you don't know whether these services are intentionally down or they are down after patching. You don't know whether you have to restart the services or not. Is it clear guys? If you have two instances or multiple instances, it is always good practice to check how many services are up and running. If other instance service is completely down, take the screenshot, keep it with you. Once patching is completed, if anyone complained like, hey, this server is not running. After patching only it is not running. The, the issue here is, some servers will be old servers, people usually don't connect to that servers. 99% is they don't connect to the servers regularly. Very rarely they will connect. After patching is completed, we will ask application team, hey, patching is completed, please check whether everything is looking good or not. They will check from the services side. What happened, these services are not up and running after patching. Even they also don't know actually those services are not up and running since before patching itself. But they, they will assume that these are running before patching, but after patching, these services are not running like that, they will assume. So that's why it's always best practice. Check how many services are up and running. If all the services are up and running, make sure after patching, after restart of the Windows server, whether all services are like it should be like a previous state. In the previous state, all the services are up and running, right? After patching, after restart of the Windows server, all the services should be in same state. If any of the services are down, take a screenshot so that you have a proof. Hey, these, these are not down because of patching. So oh, before patching itself, I took the screenshot. See here, these are the services. And guys, while taking the screenshot, you should be very careful. You cannot simply take the screenshot of the services. You have to take the screenshot of the whole server with the date and timestamp. Otherwise, they will again raise a concern, where is the date stamp and timestamp? How to believe that you took before patching? It might be an old image, right? They will argue with us. So always try to okay, take the 
screenshots with date and timestamp it should cover the whole date and timestamp okay this one this part has to be covered you have to take screenshot from here to here total screenshot you have to take so that they will verify the date and time also so that you have a proper proof that these services are down before patching itself is it clear guys any issues till now snipping tool will be there okay might be it won't be there in the windows servers in your local desktop snipping tool will be there uh, while taking the screenshot we usually use snipping tool okay so usually if i want to take screenshot what i'll do i'll simply maximize as much as i can okay and i'll try to cover the date and time stamp okay and yeah no. okay then what we have to do is let me minimize this as well so this is what i can see right now okay all the services you can see the states right now simply you'll open snipping tool in your local laptop okay snipping tool and you will simply click on this snipping tool and it will ask you to snip okay select with ip address it has to cover with ip address okay and with the date and time stamp okay it it should cover the ip address i'll highlight like this i'll usually do like this i'll highlight the ip address okay i'll highlight the date and time stamp so that it's a way of a real time work guys so that they might okay this guy is a real time guy so he is like uh, doing the work as a professional this is how you have to prove them otherwise if you simply took the screenshot of these services what is the guarantee that these services belongs to yesterday or okay on that specific day there is no date and time stamp right if you took only these services okay only these services what is the guarantee it belongs to the same server or not what is the guarantee it might belongs to other server right so that's why it's very important you have to take the proper screenshots okay it's it will act as a proofs guys to save you so that before patching uh, make sure other uh, how many instances are there how many services are up and running if any of the service is down take the screenshot so that if anyone asked you can simply show the screenshot and all is it clear everyone any questions yes sir i have one doubt sir yes please how to check how many instances are there in server sir ah okay so uh, are you like attending from first class onwards yes sir okay then go through the videos and check it okay in the last class or uh, yesterday i guess i told you once you install the sql server how many services you will get i told you in the yesterday i guess yesterday morning class i told you how many services you will get okay uh, i also gave you an assignment like if i install five instances how many services you will get if i install four instances uh, i use it ask questions okay in that session just go through it once okay right any other questions okay fine so make sure you have a proper pre space this is also an important check guys this is also very important check you should have proper free space in the c drive of the server not your laptop okay you should have proper free space okay you should have proper free space of the server with server you are patching in the server make sure you have proper free space okay so uh, in which drive you should check in the okay you should check in the c drive of the server okay you should check the c drive of the server right if you open the server c drive you, you can see i can see 7.97 gb free space okay so 7.97 gb means enough free space is there in my c drive at least 3 gb free space should be there don't patch okay if you have less than 2 gb worst case you can go for 2 gb but safe side you should have enough free space means at least 3 gb free space should be there if you do if you have only 2.5 2.4 like that you can proceed but don't proceed if you have less than 2 gb free space your patching will be failed guys why because while patching your sql server will take the backup of some binaries it might be a 1 gb or 2 gb it will keep it in the c drive if you don't have enough free space in the c drive it can't take the backup so ultimately your patching will be failed okay so you should have minimum 3 gb free space 
in the worst case at least 2 GB free space should be there in the C drive of that particular server the whole windows server that is also one more check okay right connect to the SQL server and check all the database status okay what we have to do these are the okay these things we have to do you have to check till now and we have some extra checks also from SSMS side you have to connect to the SQL server and you have to connect to the instance which instance you are patching and uh, check the databases and all how many databases are there how many are online how many are offline how many are recovery pending state guys databases will have different different states guys some databases will be online state some databases will be offline state some databases sometimes emergency mode single user mode read only mode multi user mode uh, what we can say uh, recovery pending state so like this each and some databases i am not saying regularly you can see like this most of the things most of the time you can see all the databases will be online only whatever things we are discussing now these are the worst cases guys i am not saying for every instance you might get these kind of issues no 99 percentage your patching will be smooth but these are the worst situations that i face it till now okay so that's why you might face any of this issue right so that's why we are discussing all the worst cases so uh, usually sometimes databases might be in read only state uh, sometimes it will be offline state intentionally some databases will be in offline state if you don't check the status okay before patching if you don't check the status before patching what happened guys next time next time i mean like while patching the sql server once the patching is successfully completed okay once the patching is successfully completed but if you see some databases are offline state you don't know these databases are offline before patching or after patching 99 percentage after patching database won't goes to offline state but again i told you right we have a uh, problem with the application team i told you as they don't sometimes sometimes they will connect to the server very rarely so we'll ask application team we just patched the sql server can you please check everything is looking good or not they will connect to the sql server they will check all the databases online or not imagine they found one database offline like this tasks i'm just okay uh, what intention i am keeping this database offline guys okay see if the database is offline you can see okay you can see the state like this in the brackets if the database is in recovery pending state you can see recovery pending in the brackets if the database is in restoring state you can see restoring in the brackets if the database is offline you can see like this if the database is read only mode you can see read only mode in the brackets if the database is in emergency mode you can see emergency mode in the brackets if the database is in single user mode you can see single user mode in the brackets if the database you don't see anything in the brackets means the database is healthy the database is online so that you can access all the online databases but you cannot access the offline databases you will get error like this so you you haven't checked this one simply you started patching okay after patching you just check this database is showing like this now what thing will comes in your mind first you will you will think like uh, is it because of uh, my patching or it was offline before patching itself you will get an idea right right you you will get a doubt that this database is down because of the patching or the database is intentionally down before patching itself definitely you will get the doubt otherwise at least application team will get the doubt so that's why again you have to take the snapshot or you have to okay go to the new query and take the report of all the databases what is the query guys to see all the databases report sp underscore help db okay. so if you go for sp underscore help db there you can see okay all the database with their names and the status of the all the databases you can still see whether the databases are online or offline and all you can see in the test underscore help db if databases are more databases if less databases are there you can simply take a snapshot okay see here all the databases are online 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 okay you can see the status simply you can take the uh, uh, what you can say you can copy paste this 
or um, you can export this you can simply copy paste all the columns okay you can you can simply copy paste to the any excel sheet and you can keep it with you until patching is successful once patching is successful just check how many databases are online how many offline after patching before patching the same state is there or not if anyone asks where this database is down after patching then you have a proof that this patching this database is down before patching itself then you can tell them no 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 it was down before patching itself you can tell them guys guys is it clear any questions any doubts please sir i have one doubt sir yes sir you have said that uh, to that particular drive there should be minimum 3 gb not particular drive c drive ah uh, c c drive yeah. that means mm. uh, the windows server software is in c drive and uh, sql server software in uh, d drive like that any possibility see it's not like that c drive always it will take the backup to the binaries to the c drive only okay, okay. there will, there are some chances you might keep in a uh, servers in the automation uh, that uh, dba team they can keep it in d drive e drive that is different thing but i am saying c drive you should have free space C drive to patch C drive should contain minimum three minimum three GB free space. Okay. What is the difference between single mode and emergency mode? Uh, no, the emergency mode means the database not accessible. Single user mode means only one person can be access. Uh, only one person can access the database at a time. Read only mode means uh, just we can uh, run. Read. These are simple terminologies. Okay, read only mode means the mean the word itself is saying. You can only perform select queries on the database. You cannot perform. We cannot uh, update, update, insert, delete, and all. Only read only okay. queries you can run. Okay. Okay. Just go through the see guys. If you have a time, go go to my channel. Okay. I am not promoting the channel. If you want extra subject, again go to my channel. Lot of playlists are there. There are uh, one more playlist called Quick MS SQL DBA. i just shown you how to bring the database into offline online read only mode read write mode multi user mode single user mode these are very small small things very small things okay uh, for that again we don't discuss why because uh, it's a uh, self learn uh, concepts and all uh, if you want you can just go through those videos sir. okay it's very simple right click on the database you can see whatever you want okay offline or online if i want to again bring the dis bring this database online bring on that's it this is how we usually do the offline and online and all. why some some small things i will leave it to you means i'll check really you are dedicated or not if you are really dedicated you will try to grab something that is called exploration i told you right don't think everything i have to dump no just try whatever knowledge you have whatever knowledge you got from our lectures just try to do the things own so that if you succeeded you will get the satisfaction okay it's not because of time and all just i'll give you some chance okay you also try from your side and all okay right so any other questions no questions okay chalo so that is the other thing we have to check check the sql instance name and make sure yeah make sure you have object explorer name and query results are same so what is this check okay so to, to to check the server name we have a query called select at the rate at the rate server name okay select at the rate at the rate server name this is the object explorer name right this is the object explorer this is the server name in the object explorer okay if you run this query okay if you run this query disconnect ah <sighs> Right. Okay. So just select it and execute it. You can see the server name. Guys, see this and this is same or not? This name and this name is it same or different name? Same. Same, right? So it should be same, guys. But you have to check before patching itself. I told you, right? Sometimes. sir you might ask uh, uh, can we see any servers like with a different name and all yes very rarely you can see this issue guys okay so sometimes windows people will change the server name windows server name 
they have to let us know once they change the windows server name they have to let us know but they will forget to update us very rare cases okay exceptional cases in that case you will connect to the default instance right once you connect to the default instance here it will show you different name whatever name they changed here it here it will show you the new name here in the table results it will show you the old name here new name old name so names are different right your patching will be failed guys your patching will be failed names should be same otherwise your patching will be i'm not again this is very exceptional case okay but it's always good to check before patching it's always good to check the selected server name uh, table results and object explorer server name both are same or not if not same okay what you have to do guys uh, there is a query you have to drop i'll i'll tell you that uh, i'll tell you that um, demo i'll tell you okay how to change the server name in that class i'll i'll show you what to do and all if the server names are not not same how to update the server name there are two queries you have to run uh, first you have to drop the old server okay uh, sp underscore drop server server name you have to drop the old server and you have to add the new server name sp underscore add server server name these two queries you have to run and you have to restart the sql server then the issue will be fixed then you can patch the sql server guys okay so but it's a precautionary check before patching you have to check you might ask sir all these these things we have to check check now before patching all these things we have to check or what it's good if you check all these things if you don't check you will get the issue patching will be failed so that instead of one minute check you have to spend one hour to fix the issue okay right so always check before patching always check the selected server name okay uh, output of the selected server name and the instance name in the object explorer both are same or not right it should be same if not same uh, don't patch the server fix the issue first then patch the server in the same way guys there is the same kind of uh, okay uh, issue guys selected at version right to find the sql server version we have selected at version check the version also here it is showing 14.0.1069 right here also it is showing same 14.0.1069 there are some cases there are some cases rare cases here it will show you different number 14.0 will be same but 1000.169 here it will show you different number here it will show you different number guys the numbers not equal won't be equal sometimes very rare cases okay what is the reason for that is the last time if any dba patched the patch is not successful sometimes dbs will apply the patches right sometimes they will be succeeded sometimes they will be failed if the patches are failed or partially successful either successful or failed or partially successful so if the server is partially successful then here it will show you different build number here it will show you different build number so which is not correct guys that also creates issue that also creates issue so that's why before and after patching make sure these numbers are same or not after patching also you have to verify whether patching is successful succeeded or not by just checking these two numbers you have to after patching before patching you have to run this query selected version check these two numbers are equal or not if the if the two numbers are equal two bill numbers are equal there are no issues you can happily patch the sql server after patching also again you have to check okay selected its version and check the build number of your object explorer and your table results guys it should be same after patching also these two numbers should be same okay so this is also one more check you have to follow right fine so reboot the server you know this check right before patching it's always good practice to restart the server otherwise actually there is one check okay while patching you will get lot of checks lot means six or seven checks will be there in that restart computer check will be failed if you don't restart the windows server that check won't allow you to proceed next so 
so always it's good practice to restart the whole windows server before patching i guess you know how to restart the windows server okay as you took the downtime approval you can continue okay or else you can choose maintenance activity right application maintenance planned always you have to choose planned activities only not unplanned okay choose planned activity click continue automatically it will be restarted guys automatically it will be restarted okay before patching you have to restart the server after patching also you have to restart the server guys okay this is one more check take the backup of all the databases if possible okay guys let me reconnect it is showing less than one minute let me reconnect guys please use the same link to join